Sometimes movies and TV shows like Okay, that was vague, I admit. I've noticed there's a certain perspective in consuming media that often leads to disagreements between people discussing said media and that's born from a single question. Should you believe something in a movie or TV show is true just because it tells you it is? This has more to do with how the story is told than possible purposeful misdirection on the part of the writers. To give a very clear example of what I mean, in Against the Dark, barely starring Steven Seagal, the characters all decide that this is an impassable blockade and the rest of the plot pretty much hinges on their inability to cross it. This may seem like something that would only happen in So Bad It's Funny B movies, but it's popped up a lot in popular discourse more than once. A lot of the arguments I've seen about the movie Glass Onion, which I made a video about if you're interested, revolve around the idea of whether or not the movie's explanation of its plot makes sense. On one hand, you have people who will say it's not a plot hole, it's explained in the movie, and on the other, you'll have people who say it is a plot hole and the explanation is a subpar attempt to cover it up. And the same thing kind of happens with Fred in HBO's Velma. Because this show will tell you something, but then it will also show you something that directly contradicts what it told you and then pretend that it didn't just happen. You may wonder why I'm choosing Velma for the topic for this video, especially because it seems like most of the hate for it on the internet has sort of died down. But you know, I wrote this script a while ago and I've kind of have this problem where I keep writing scripts and having to push things back. And you know, Velma is just a big treasure trove for writing advice, specifically what you shouldn't do. But let's actually get into the topic for the video. If you know anything about this show, you may or may not know that there's a lot of dialogue dedicated to talking about white people in this show, and not in a flattering way. But what it says is not consistent with what it shows. For instance, a lot of dialogue is dedicated to how white people receive priority from the police. Velma says this in the first episode. If I were a rich white dude, I'd kill everybody just to get away with it. But that creates a disconnect when you realize that episode 1 ends not only with Fred being falsely arrested for murder, but with the police breaking into his house and shooting him twice instead of the girl who broke into the house in the first place before arresting him for a crime he didn't commit on evidence that is extremely shaky. After this scene, any dialogue referring to Fred's systemic privilege is kind of tainted by the fact he's a victim of police brutality and was sent to prison for a crime he was completely innocent of, largely because, and the main character makes it very clear with her repeated assertions of it, he's white. Fred's a rich white guy with a tiny dong, he did it. But of course, this isn't everything. There's also body shaming. A whole episode is dedicated to women being body shamed and pressured into achieving unnatural standards of beauty that's completely tone deaf to the fact that Velma added the size of Fred's you know what to the list of reasons he's probably the killer. So while it condemns body shaming on one hand, it constantly plays up Fred's underdeveloped body as a reason to laugh at him and a sign he's dangerous because his anger at not measuring up to societal standards will make him lash out. Of course, he's not the victim in that situation, he's the problem. I feel it's important to remind everyone he's about 15 in this show. This is to say nothing of the fact that Fred seems to be the most inherently nice person in the cast. Let me explain. Every one of the main characters in this show is horrible in their own special way, but Fred is the only one who is portrayed as horrible not for any inherent reason, but because of constant emotional neglect and physical abuse from his parents. Did she put her cigars out on you? Uh, no. Thank you for taking my case. We could not be happier you're on the team, Velma's dad. <clears throat> uh, sorry. His parents threaten to kick him out if he doesn't win a popularity contest in episode 7. Coincidentally, this was the point at which I stopped expecting the show to get better. I know, I know, I am a paragon of optimism. <laughs> Shit! Hyacinth's down! Retreat! <laughs> oh, damn it, we're losing her! In what appears to be an effort to portray Fred's dad, whose name I refuse to put any effort into learning, as an example of toxic masculinity, the show, seemingly by accident, makes Fred into a possibly mentally ill, seriously abused child whose parents put active effort into making sure he acts like the pompous douchebag the show needs him to be so he can keep being the butt of its jokes. When Fred reads the feminine mystique and becomes a male feminist who appreciates women's inner beauty more than their outer bodies, his dad spends multiple episodes trying to turn him back into what he was in the first few episodes and even threatens to kick him out if he asked Velma out instead of Daphne. So on one hand, the show will clearly broadcast that many of Fred's problems come from emotional abuse, but it also still insists on using him as the butt of the joke. 
One of the most significant juxtapositions in the show is seeing how differently he and Velma defend each other from murder accusations. Fred, while being unintentionally insensitive, makes appeals to Velma's character as being someone who wouldn't kill people because he's gotten to know her. Velma's defense, however, kind of falls short because it's pretty much designed to make as much fun of Fred as possible and involves making fun of his inability to use simple tools and his physical shortcomings. Now, don't get it twisted, Fred is not a good character and almost every word out of his mouth makes me wish I could push him off a bridge. And considering what happened the last time I said something like that, it may happen in season 2. But there's nothing about this character that makes me really care to see her undergo that arc any more than I want to see her get hit by a car. What are you gonna do about that? I'm sure it sounds like I'm describing an interesting subversion or a worthwhile character arc, but that's only on paper and it's probably definitely by accident. I've said Fred has the best character arc of all the main characters in this show, but that is not an achievement to be proud of. But you know, what I can say for him is that with better writing, he could have become a good character. Which is better than my assessment for pretty much almost every other character on this show. It's just so amusing to think of how Velma has a whole monologue in the finale about how people like Fred act like they are victims, while he's strapped to a table so his mother could murder him. The same mother who threatened to make him homeless because he didn't conform to their standards at 15. Also not long since he was falsely accused for a crime largely because he's white by Velma. And the worst part is that it, I look at Fred and I feel like he's trying to be better. Like when he bought the mystery machine in an admittedly stupid effort to impress his parents. And I might even be tempted to call it sympathetic if I like the character. And can I just say, it's hilarious that the opening up monologue of the show starts with Velma saying she's the one who founded the mystery solving team, only to end with Fred being the first person to actually take an interest in professional mystery solving at the end. Like, how do you even do that by accident? What, is season 2 going to be about how Velma takes over and takes credit for his idea? I guess it would be consistent with her character. You know, I can see why so many people thought this show was some sort of psyop made by republican plants meant to make progressive movements and stories look bad. I don't believe it because it means that all the writers, producers, executives and so many others working at HBO were all in on this secret political conspiracy but you know what, I can see why some people would. I am finding myself more partial to the idea that it was written to be bad on purpose to get social media attention however. If it's revealed that this was all on purpose, I wouldn't doubt it for a second. And that's just it. This whole thing about how Fred is written in the show might have made an amazing twist if it was on purpose. It would be a bit stupid considering how long it was dragged out and because Velma has a habit of undoing character development it probably wouldn't change much and most of the audience probably would have dropped it by now if they were smarter than me. But bizarre writing decisions at this show's bread and butter. So the next time you look at Fred in this show, I say that as if most people are ever going to look at this show again, ask yourself this. Is Fred really the pampered, sheltered, privileged, rich kid it insists he is? Or is he an abused, possibly neurodivergent teenager trying his best even as literally everyone in the universe kicks him while he's down? Okay, he's both but I'm pretty sure the show really hopes you don't acknowledge that last part. When a story tells you something, it's up to you as a discerning watcher to determine whether or not you believe it in the context it's been shown. If you don't, then it raises the question of if you think that your lack of belief was a mistake or on purpose. And while I have you here, why don't you go down in the comments section and give me an example of a show or movie or book that has told you something that you just straight up didn't believe. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you and good day.